You tapping in real quick for this UFC 300 card to go ahead and break down this Charles Oliveira versus Armand Sarukian fight. Now, me personally, I'm on the Charles Oliveira side of things. And in this video, we can discuss why. Now, do I understand why individuals is heavy on the Armand side of things? I do. Do I respect it? I do. We can talk about that too. Now, let's go ahead and dive into it. Armand, 21 and 3, made his MMA debut back in 2015. Charles, 34 and 9, made his MMA debut back in 2007, made his UFC debut back in 2010. Now, I only say that to say this. By the time Armand Sarukian became a part of the mixed martial arts conversation, Charles Oliveira had already been fighting for five years at the highest level of competition inside the UFC octagon. You understand what I'm saying to you? Armand's 21 victories can be matched with Charles's 21 victories by submission. You understand what I'm saying to you? Charles is different. The level of competition has been different. You understand what I'm saying to you? Armin's whole career, Charles has been over here fighting in the UFC at a higher level of competition. So not only does he have that experience of having a longer career, but he has that experience with higher level competition. You understand what I'm saying to you? For all of Armin's career, you know what I mean? Now, has Armin done great at this level of competition as of yet? Yes, he has. Yes, he has. Other than his hiccup with Matus Gamrod, he's been absolutely flawless since his, M, uh, his since his UFC debut against Islam. Now, let's talk about that because that's been brought up a lot this week by a lot of individuals. That fight in particular leading into this one. Now, was that a good fight? Yes, it was. At the time, at the moment that we watched that fight, that I watched that fight, it was fucking mind-blowing. Like, it was an amazing performance exceeded my expectations by far. Like, I didn't see this individual coming here and making it competitive with Islam and the grappling department and the wrestling exchanges. You understand what I'm saying to you? But that's what he did. He came in and he made it competitive in the grappling and the wrestling exchanges and he took it to the courts. Mind blown at the time. Like, it was, it was wonderful to see. It was great to see. It was great to see. I think it was just the moment, though, that a motherfucker got caught up in that uh, had me thinking the ceiling was going to be so much higher for him. Like, that night, after that fight, I said, oh, man, he's a motherfucking dog. Like, I'm fucking with him. I'm locking in with him. He going to be a problem. Ain't nobody fucking touching him until he gets back to Islam again. And then he's going to approach the fight differently. And we're going to see, you know, we might see a different outcome. Like, that's where I was, right? After that worn off, and what I mean by like after that worn off, when he was getting ready to fight again, I had to go back and look at the tape, watch the fight again. When he was going to fight with Toos, I knew there was going to be more grappling and wrestling exchanges in that one for sure. So I really went back and watched it a couple of times. I've watched it a half a dozen times in the last 24 hours leading up to this fight. You understand what I'm saying to you? And not to take anything from anybody. That was a grappling match. It was a grappling match. It was a wrestling match. It was a fight full of grappling exchanges. You know, I don't even want to use the word fight. Was it a fight? It was a fight, but come on, man. Islam put up like around 40 strikes over 15 minutes. Well, you know, Armand did outstrike him and put up around 70 something strikes over 15 minutes. But that, that fucking, that matchup was about controlling position, being powerful in positions and not getting transitioned out of position and letting the other man get a dominant position. Islam wasn't about to let this man come in with his grappling background and get anything off. It was a lot of pride involved in that fight on both sides. And on this side, Armand was about to, you know, he was coming in and he wasn't about to just let this man manhandle him. Like, you know, him and Khabib have been manhandling individuals and grappling exchanges. He wasn't going to be scared to grapple with this man. He was going to do what he do. So they grappled and they wrestled. And there wasn't really, look at it, there wasn't really any ground and pound throwing when they were on the ground. There wasn't a lot of strikes thrown on the feet. Like, it was minimal strikes thrown in the grappling. The clean. Like, it, it wasn't a lot going on other than securing position and trying to be dominant position and make sure this other man isn't dominant in those positions because these are my positions and this is my world and I'm the grappler here, motherfucker. Like, that's what that fight was about, in my personal opinion. You understand what I'm saying to you? That's not the kind of fight he's going to get on Saturday. Styles make fights. You understand what I'm saying to you? And Charles has a very dangerous style when it comes to 
this fight against Armand Sarukian. You understand what I'm saying to you? He is by far the more dangerous man on the feet. I don't think I have to try to convince anybody of that. I hope I don't have to try to convince anybody of that. I think, I believe we all know that Charles Oliveira is the way more dangerous, way more versatile, way more capable individual on the feet. The lunging elbows, the spinning elbows, the spinning heel kicks, the back fists, the flying attacks. Like, he has way more in his arsenal, way more weapons, and he's way more capable of creating situations on the feet than Armand Sarukian is. That's a fucking fact. You understand what I'm saying to you? Is Armand stronger and more capable and intelligent in the wrestling and grappling exchanges? Yes, he is. But Charles Oliveira is not going to wrestle or grapple with this man. When you get a hold of Charles Oliveira, he's going to throw up multiple submission attempts. You understand what I'm saying to you? One after the other after the other. If you think that he's going to come in there and slam Charles on the ground and pound this man out in any way, shape, form, or fashion, I'm telling you, you've lost your fucking mind. Can he possibly catch Charles on the feet? in a wild exchange, clip him, and then rain down on him for the TKO, TKO? Yes, he can. But that's completely different than when a man is 100% aware of everything going on and you just shoot for the takedown. You understand what I'm saying to you? Then you're in an active guard. He's throwing up motherfucking arm bars, triangles. He's going for heel hooks, knee bars. Motherfucker do a toe pick like he going for anything. If you're in the clinch, he'll go through a fly, for, for a fucking flying triangle, flying arm bar. That guard is active as fuck. And if you get down over top of him and you try to punch on him, his head's going to be back here behind you. You know what I'm Like he's going to tuck it. He's so agile and flexible. Him, Nate Diaz, individuals like this, when you take them down and try to pound on them, they're not there. Go look at their fights. They're not their heads back here. Then you're turning around and try to punch them here or get them more and they're grabbing a knee or look. So you're just getting frustrated and try to yank your fucking limbs away and get it back to the feet. But if that's what happens and he was already causing you problems on the feet, you understand what I'm saying to you? So you chose to take it to the ground, but that didn't work out for you. So you now you're back to the feet. Where are you going to win at other than catching him and clipping him? You understand what I'm saying to you? Charles is a dangerous individual anywhere the fight can go. Does he got the advantage? Does Armand have the advantage in the wrestling and the grappling exchanges? He does. But I believe that Charles' guard, his very active guard, is going to negate all that. You understand what I'm saying, too? Like, Charles is going to cause him problems on the feet, and Armand's going to try to secure a round for a take and go for a takedown, and Charles is going to put him in a compromisable position, man. He's going to put him in survival mode. He's going to put him in a position he don't want to fucking be in, which is going to cause Armin to be hesitant to shoot, which could cause Armin to get clipped on the feet. You understand what I'm saying to you? That's if he, if he survives the exchange of taking Charles to the ground. Because if you're telling me he has to rack up control time, top pressure, maybe some ground and pound, whatever the case may be, and ride out on top of Charles for a little bit to get this victory if he's not able to clip him on the feet... I'm telling you, that's not happening. It's a high probability of him getting his motherfucking limbs snatched up, his neck snatched up, something happening to him in those exchanges. And he's going to feel it in the first one or two exchanges. He's going to be hesitant to do it anymore, man. Then it's going to remain on the feet. And that's going to be a real fucking problem for him, man. Um, plus, you're talking about a 34% takedown accuracy. Charles only got like a 55% takedown defense, but I'll take that over a 34% takedown accuracy because that means a little bit more than half of the takedowns coming at your way, you're able to defend them joints. Wow. This man, he's shooting for takedown after takedown after takedown that he's not fucking getting. You understand what I'm saying to you? And maybe he's racking up some control time up against the cage or something like that when he's not getting these takedowns, but I don't think you want to try to be too close and, 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 and interlocked with Charles Oliveira on Saturday. You understand what I'm saying to you? Trying to get yourself a victory. So I see Charles Oliveira getting it done inside the distance or by unanimous decision. Um, his experience inside the octagon and um, how dangerous he is on the feet, which is going to cause Armand to want to shoot. And then how active and dangerous his guard is when Armand's going to shoot. All these reasons just make me um, not lean, but pick Charles Oliveira. Appreciate y'all for tapping in.